Hello everybody, my name's James and for the benefit of those listening on the audio, you're listening to my regular YouTube live stream, Ask James, where I welcome questions from the YouTube community on anything football related. Before I get into the questions, uh, team news for you ahead of FPL's game week 13, I'll give you the essentials. Ben Chilwell, uh, according to Thomas Tuchel, he has a partial injury of his ACL and the decision is to treat, treat it conservatively. And the next six weeks will tell the story if he makes it and be fully available or needs surgery after that. I would suggest you're probably looking at a minimum of about three months. And obviously, if he needs surgery, unfortunately, he's very unlikely to play football again this season. Unfortunately, if he's in your FPL team, it is an obvious move on. N'Golo Kante is very unlikely to feature for Chelsea this weekend. Romelu Lukaku is in training, but uh, I picked up from Thomas Tuchel's comments that he's probably unlikely to start. Um, Jan Visser's back in the Br uh, Brentford squad. Tarkovsky and Westwood both suspended for Burnley. Abdullah Dukuri could return for Everton. Richarlison is suspended. Rafinha and Rodrigo both available for selection for Leeds. No new issues for Liverpool, which includes Diogo Jota being available. He was on the bench in midweek. Guardiola says Foden and Grealish are training individually and much better. They could be in line for selection on Sunday. KDB will remain out. Shaw and Fred are doubts for Manchester United. Stuart Armstrong is out for Southampton. And that's about it, I think. It's quite light. light. Obviously, the Ben Shilwell news is big news. Uh, briefly, before I get into the questions... A reminder for anybody in the Northwest tomorrow night, I'll be in Manchester. Uh, what's the name of the pub? The Brotherhood. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll tweet it again later today. I'll be at the Brotherhood pub from around about 5.30pm. It's just a meet-up. If you want to come and have a drink, come and say hello. I'll be in Manchester for the evening ahead of my trip to watch Tottenham. Yes, my Tottenham at Burnley on Sunday. Uh, Mohamed Cameras man says, Hello, James. Hope you're well. Do you follow chess? If yes, who are you rooting for? Ian Nepomnikati, yeah, him, or Magnus Coulson for World Chess Championship. Thanks, looking forward to the stream. Well, we got a back Magnus, haven't we? He's a star FPL player as well. So, as a community, we got to stick together and back Magnus, haven't we? Adam says, hey, James, mate, who would you say are most likely in order of the top three teams to keep a clean sheet this weekend? I'm going Liverpool, Chelsea, City in that order. What you reckon? All. Um, I think in theory, yes, that's the correct order. However, on our Patreon podcast this morning, I've predicted clean sheets for Chelsea and City. I'm back in Southampton to score, actually. So I'd probably have that in the reverse order. Um, but certainly in terms of uh, betting odds, yeah, you would make Liverpool favourites, I guess. Neil Thompson says, Afternoon, James. We'll start with good luck on Sunday in the wind at Burnley. <laughs> what have I done? Uh, Sky Fantasy Football question. I have Saar from Wolves. Would you keep till overhaul? Fixtures look rough. We certainly keep him for the the next couple, Norwich this weekend and Burnley in midweek. Let me get my Sky Planner up. Uh, so there's a few teams you could jump to on Thursday. What about Aaron Ramsdale of Arsenal uh, next Thursday on the 2nd? If you don't have coverage for the Everton-Arsenal single game day on Monday the 6th. David De Gea. Manchester United have a long consecutive run of good fixtures. Hugo Lloris you could jump to. And also Alvaro Fernandez of Brentford uh, ahead of their single game day against Watford on Friday the 10th. So yeah, I'd be looking to move to one of those four on Thursday the 2nd. Or if you want to wait one more game, you've got a greater selection of teams of Sunday the 5th. Or you could go in for, I guess, Jordan Pickford on Monday the 6th. But I wouldn't particularly advise that one. Yeah, I'd be looking to move on, Neil. Paul Spencer, 007, says, Afternoon, James. Should I start Antonio or Dennis? Many thanks, mate. Um, I wouldn't be a believer of leaving Antonio out in any fixture. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying he scored at the yes, he had last season. Um, but I think in most cases, you'd probably want to play Emmanuel Dennis this weekend as well. I'd go Antonio, mate. But then I'm, I'm a stickler for wanting to play players like Antonio. I know have the capability. In all seriousness, but looking to sell Antonio. But if I had him, I'd start him. Uh, Padraig Donnelly says, Hi James, do you think it's worth a minus four to bring in Alonso for Azpilicueta? Wildcard in game week 16, so only a short-term option. Thanks. No. Um, in short, although that depends a little bit, Padraig, on in terms of what your bench is, my friend. So if your bench is rough as, and I'm guessing that might include Azpilicueta as part of that, then maybe yes. In my case... 
I'm wild carding in game week 16, as many of you will know, and I just cannot justify a minus four for the likes of uh, Alonso or Rhys James or Trent Alexander-Arnold. It'd be a minus eight for me to get back to Trent, which I don't think is worth it for this short term of a, pin, uh, a period. I mean, the one player I really don't fancy to return for my attacking players this weekend is Rafinha, who has two great home fixtures before wild cards. So I, I can't, with all the players fit, I, I can't really justify it. So I'm going to go without. I think the answer, Padraig, probably lies within what's on your bench. If you've got good cover, the answer's probably no. Uh, Neil Thompson says, me again. I have grey in Sky Fantasy Football. Would a move to Webster or Alonso make sense? Anybody else up to 8.5 million that I might be missing out on? Dunk, thanks again and have a great weekend. Neil, if you haven't, I highly recommend listening to our podcast we did on Wednesday uh, on Sky Fantasy Football because I spoke about that exact dilemma about my new strategy was to move to Gray to Webster, but I would have a second look at Gray to Alonso if there was confirmation that Chilwell was going to be out for a significant period, which it's now confirmed that he is. I haven't had time to relook at that plan yet, Neil. I suspect I'm probably going to buy Alonso, but I need to relook at the plan in terms of how that's going to fix me up for the next eight, nine game weeks, basically, mate. Brian McKenna says, Hi, James, it's coming up to Christmas, and if a miracle happened and you got the choice of Kante or De Bruyne for the Spurs midfield, which would you pick and why? What a question. What a question. I would say De Bruyne um, because the, the team lacks creativity desperately. Um, so I think specifically for us, it would have to be Kevin De Bruyne for me. Um, but Kante, it's like having an extra man on the pitch, isn't he? It'd be a miss for Chelsea if he's going to be absent at the weekend. Austin Lady says, Hi, James. What do you make of the Ranić discussions and how could it impact FPL? Well, he, I think, to much of our surprise, if he goes in there, he's going to look like an amazing interim um, appointment. I did a lot of research um, on Ranić in the summer um, when I knew Tottenham were looking for a director of football before appointing Fabio Paratici because I liked the idea of him coming in as a director of football because his network um, among modern playing style German managers. He's also worked, I think, with people like Ralph Hassan Hoot at Southampton. He's the sort of brand of football that ideally I would have wanted to watch at Tottenham. Um, so I really liked the idea of Ranić potentially coming in upstairs at Tottenham. So I think if he comes upstairs at Manchester United, you're going to see a, a complete revolution uh, at Old Trafford in terms of Manchester United's playing style over the coming years, which I think will lean nearer towards Liverpool's style, actually. Fascinating to see how it plays out. Um, can he play the way he wants to with the players he's got? My opinion would be yes. I don't believe that people like Marcus Rashford and Jaden Sancho and Mason Greenwood and Bruno Fernandes that they can't press. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo can be used to shut down passing lines and stuff. Doesn't have to go and press goalkeepers and stuff. So I think yes. And in any case, my opinion was always that that, that run of fixtures is just too good to be true anyway. All the way up to when is it? And they play Man City in like game week 28 or something from the Arsenal and Palace fixtures respectively in 14-15. It's an incredible run of fixtures. And uh, yeah, I think we should have Manchester United assets very much on radar, particularly the offensive ones. Players at the moment we wouldn't consider right now, like Rashford, like Jadon Sancho, uh, we should have in our mind. Bruno Fernandes might come back around. I think Luke Shaw's died so much in price that he might be worth looking at again. I know Gary is my cap player and our main night correspondent would probably disagree with that, but... Yeah, United will very much be on radar for my wild card in game week 16. Uh, James98 says, oh, sorry, Hollis Stamos. Uh, hello, James. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, I've had better ones, but it's better than yesterday. TA destroyed me last week. Uh, sitting at 4K, so I need opinion on Veltman and Vardy to TA and Jimenez from minus four. Would need to start Veltman otherwise. Um, I can't be getting rid of Jamie Vardy this week mate can't be getting rid of him it'd arguably be the best captaincy option after Mo Salah depending on your opinion I know they're in not a good place they've got brilliant four fixtures arguably six so I wouldn't be looking to leave Jamie Vardy certainly not this week so I'd, I'd have to I'd have to say no mate it sounds like a minus four to force in Trent rather than the other moves are almost irrelevant so be a no for me my friend 
Uh, James98 says, Afternoon, James. Hope all is well. Which three teams do you think will be going down this year? Personally, think Norwich and Watford, and it'll be Brentford or Newcastle for the final spot. Uh, yes, definitely Norwich. Although, I have a suspicion they might win again tomorrow. But yes, I think they'll go down. Um, I think it's a huge three games for Newcastle. Not so much this weekend, but the next two, Norwich and Burnley. If they come out of them winless, I... I'm not sure that anything they do in January will save them. I think you, you, then you're looking at a period of them getting to what game week 16 without having a win. And then they've got Leicester away, Liverpool away, Man City at home, Man United at home. Very quickly it can become 19 games, half a season without a win. So big couple of weeks for Newcastle. I think that I, they need at least four points from them two home games really, if not six. So I think yes, Newcastle I, I think will go. I think Brentford will get sucked back into it. Um, I think Burnley will be okay. So if you're pinning me, I'd probably say Watford, but they've got goals in them at the moment. Alex Percival says, Love the content, James. In your opinion, is it worth minus four to get Jota in the squad to replace the injured Foden? Seems boring to me. He's boring best in this case. Keep up the good work, mate. Um, I certainly think it will work to Jota's benefit having had a break in midweek in the Champions League. Gives him more chance of starting the next three games. It wasn't an update on Roberto Firmino today, as far as I can see. So I presume that he won't be back for at least the next three league games. Um, but Foden isn't definitely out, mate. <laughs> it's worth saying. Guardiola said he's been training, right? So I, I didn't, I didn't take that as a ruled out at all. So minus four. Not convinced. I say Jota is a certain starter. In fairness, again, Alex, it might line what's on your bench and stuff. Um, I, I would also say, if you're not getting Jota this week, I'd probably, despite the fact he'll start the next two, you might find your weight until game week 16, by which point Firmino might be back. So, depends, Alex. If you want to view it over, you're happy to view it over six, seven, eight weeks, probably yes, even in spite of Firmino's return. But City have good fixtures too. I mean, after West Ham this Sunday, which is a tough game, Arsenal away game week 21. Other than that, you could see City winning seven, eight games in a row. I'm not convinced, Alex, to be honest. TJ Powell says, Hey, James, sorry to be the one to... Ah, oh, fucking hell. Sorry to be the one to ask about Tottenham, but how does it feel to have broken Jamie O'Hara to the point he starts talking sense? Oh, God, Jamie O'Hara, what an embarrassment. Um, I haven't seen his comments because I refuse to listen to the nonsense that comes out of his mouth, to be very honest with you. Um... Good. Is that it on Tottenham? Okay, cool. Let's move on. Hamish Holmes says, Afternoon, Chief. Have it slightly to start this weekend. Question. Pondering a minus four for Jota, but then what's the latest on Firmino's return? We just kind of covered. I didn't get anything on Firmino today, so I assume he's still out. Which I think if he's out now, he's probably out for the next two as well, as I said. I think Havertz probably does start this weekend, though, because of what I said at the, the top of the stream about Romelu Lukaku and being back in training. Um, but Thomas Tuchel saying that that didn't necessarily mean he was match fit was the long and short of what he said. So I think Havertz will start again, but I can understand why you want to move that on. Um, I'd probably do it, actually. I'd probably do it. Sam Holden says, Ranjik. I think smart appointment, but Messiah of German football, yet the national team, Bayern or Dortmund have gone, on, gone nowhere near him. Uh, I know you looked into him for Spurs thoughts, hype real. Yeah, hype real. Hype real. Very experienced, in my opinion. Um, but to be honest, not been looking for managerial jobs. Hence, in my, was he at Locomotive Moscow, taking an upstairs position there as well. Um, which is why interim, I know that when Chelsea appointed Tuchel, they, they looked at him again, following that kind of strategy of type of manager. They looked at him as an interim option before appointing Thomas Tuchel. And he turned down the Chelsea job because he said he didn't want to be someone's interim. The difference with United is he knows his interim and then the job upstairs that he wants where he can have influence. And United definitely need someone upstairs with a football brain because I don't think there's anybody amongst the board at Manchester United that's, that's got one at the moment. So, yeah, it's not bad appointment. I promise you that. Fairly certain it will be good news for Manchester United. Steve Jones says, Hi, James. Quick fire Premier League predictions at this point. Who will be champions? Who will finish fourth? Which three teams will go down? Well, I've done the three teams to go down, haven't I? I think you still make United favourites for fourth. Um, 
Tottenham might have a chance if we don't go through in the Conference League, ironically. West Ham will be amongst it. Arsenal will be amongst it. I think United would still have to be favourites because of that long stretch of fixtures, which you could argue starts after this weekend. Uh, in terms of who win the league, man, I think as as Gary said on Tuesday's People's Poll, and he's right to say it, it could be record points for third. Could Any of them could win it. Um I still suspect it might be City, but the answer really is whichever one will be most consistent, uh, which at the moment you'd arguably say looks to be Chelsea. Rob Picks says, hi mate, do you think either of these are worth a minus four? Saar to Sun or Antonio to Kane? Cheers and good luck this week. Hopefully see you tomorrow. Yeah, both. You obviously can't do both, but yeah, both. The way I look at it, is the teams Tottenham are playing in the next three, hypothetically, could be the three teams that get relegated. Antonio plays City away and Chelsea in those three, and Brighton at home. Ishmael Assar is injured, and those three fixtures are Leicester, Chelsea, Man City anyway. Yeah. To be honest, Rob, if you'd be asking me the question, should I do this for a minus eight, I'd say yes. Yeah, I'd back him over this little stretch, then I'd want to get rid straight afterwards. Benny Blanco says, if you knew someone who transferred in Chilwell before his injury, Benny, I think he's describing himself, would you recommend a minus four to move him to Alonso this game week? I'll pass on the answer to the idiot. Thanks, James. When you're making a decision, you can't you can't reflect on... By, by making one bad decision, don't make two bad decisions. That's what probably what Magnus Carlsen would say to you playing chess or FPL. All right, one decision's happened. You've got Chilwell in early. He's got injured. Yeah. Move it on, mate. Move it on. Get rid. Take the hit. But again, it's a little bit subjective to what your bench is, Benny. Hamish Holmes says, Alonso or James, who's the better option now? I've, I think it's still Reese James. Um, though I think there's possibly slightly more chance for Alonso starting three games over the, the next three game weeks. Still Reese James. Absolutely firing at the moment. Um, but it's close. And I can understand the appeal of wanting to go straight to Alonso as a differential. Uh, Berth Media says hello. Hello, Berth Media. L. Ron Cupboard says, Do you think Conte's expensive hairline will survive Spurs? No chance his hairline survives Spurs, not without another transplant. Uh, pff, poor fella. Lexus Steeleman says, James, need two uh, for Jota downgrading Duffy. Uh, need point two for, I'd say, sorry, I'll read that again. Need point two for Jota downgrading Duffy. Who would you go for? Uh, Brandon Williams seems the most nailed. Might have to be first sub for a game or two. Ben Johnson at West Ham. Although Suj said to us on Tottenham on Wednesday um, that he thought Sufal might come back in now. Um, well, depend what you're selling Duffy for. I'm not sure what you'd be selling for. Be obviously going really cheap, aren't you? Uh, he, probably is Williams none, none of them really stand out at the moment I'd arguably go Ben Johnson if I was wildcarding now arguably uh, but that might not be the best place to find it uh, do you need Jota you want Jota do you need Berth Media says thoughts on Alonso or Reguilon as a replacement for Azpilicueta Alonso mate definitely no question on that FPL finding glory afternoon James Sky Fantasy Football it's so complicated compared to FPL do you have a cheat sheet or something to guide transfer planning? My friend, you're on Patreon. Get yourself in the SkyFF Slack channel. Have a look at my spreadsheet. I'll post it again for you on, on there tonight. If you can't find it, let me know and I'll share it with you anyway. FPL question. What's the weather in Liverpool this weekend? <laughs> yep, prepare to hear Jurgen Klopp moaning about wind over the weekend because it's coming. Uh, tonight and the majority of tomorrow, it's going to get very windy in the north of England. Um, so, yeah, prepare for Jurgen Klopp to have a whinge about wind, I should imagine. Uh, hopefully for him, Southampton don't physically give it to him. Thomas Coleman says, Afternoon, James. Great work on the content. I could see you being a football correspondent for the likes of BBC or Sky. Would that interest you? Uh, yeah, only if it wouldn't clash with Tottenham. And, uh, you know, I, d I don't want to leave Sudge without a podcast partner. But, uh, yeah, commentator, no, because... Uh, Correspondent of some sort, maybe, but I'm not giving up watching Tottenham madly. 
Uh, free, free, free. Marson says, hi, James. Hope you're well. I've done sure well to James. What are your thoughts on really good to Alonso from minus four or just wait till next week? That's a wait. That's not a hit move. It's not a hit move. Rudiger got 14 points last week. Easy could have been 17. In fact, it would have, probably would have been 18 if hudson Adoy had buried the chance um, late in the second half. So, no. Keep Rudiger. United without Maguire this week. That's going to be a problem at set pieces for them. To so keep Rudiger, mate. Garlic25 says, Havertz to Jota or Bernardo and Gray to Bowen or Corne. Or hold the second transfer and play Tommy Asu. Thanks, have a good weekend. I wouldn't have concerns about playing Tommy Asu this weekend, although for those who listened to Clash of the Correspondence yesterday, I did say I think Newcastle will score this weekend. Um Habits to Jota over Bernardo for me. Gray to it'd be Corne. Excuse me at the moment. Because of the difficult week ahead West Ham have, so uh, I'd I'd be tempted. Habits to Jota and Gray to Corne. I'd be I'd be quite tempted with that. Hamish Holmes has a Sky question. It says, do our plans need to change to include Alonso potential cheat code at the value? Again, that's very much covered on Wednesday's Sky Fantasy Football Podcast, mate. Uh, my friend Tom Campbell is in. says, hi, James, mate. Great clash of the correspondence this week. Another Sky question. Best plan for Everton, Arsenal and the Brentford Watford games. Currently have nobody from any of these teams. Cheers, pal. So, Arsenal, I think you should have one for the Everton fixture whether it be you approach it on that evening or you buy someone on Thursday night, depending on who you sell. I mean, for the case I gave earlier, Sartre Ramsdale would probably go on the Thursday. If you're going, I don't know, someone with a decent fixture the following weekend, you want to go to Smith Row. Let's say you were going Harry Kane to Aubameyang, then obviously you you wait for after Tottenham play Norwich. But uh, yes, I think you should have an Arsenal player. In terms of Brentford entry, Tom... I would want something. It's a shame that Christian Norgard's on four yellow cards because he'd be really good for that format. That feels a bit risky. I would look at selling someone who's playing Saturday the 4th. So again, perhaps if you have a... Or even uh, Wednesday the 1st. If you have any form of Wolves, Wolves player, if you have like a Kilman sitting there or Huang, I'd be looking to move that on uh, on Thursday the 2nd or Sunday the 5th. I think, yeah, get a Brentford player. Yeah, easily you could buy one this Sunday as well. Tony, short term. You could sell, let's say you've got Aubameyang, um, Tom. Actually, Aubameyang's a really bad example because of the, the Monday fixture. Let's say you've got two up front and you've got, I don't know. In fact, let, let's, say, let's say you want to get rid of Rafinha. You can move Rafinha on. You've got four fixtures of Brentford. There's two fixtures of Leeds. There's loads of scenarios like this, Tom. Loads. Come off a Brentford player, miss West Ham and Southampton away, go to the four Brentford games, go back to Brighton on Sunday the 12th. There's loads of ways to skin it. If you want my plan of spreadsheet, Tom, let, let me know. You're a patron. You can have it, my friend. Uh, Sage says, Foden out for Bernardo Silva. <laughs> Every week I'm going to say this about Bernardo, and I? Every week, I'm probably going to be wrong. It was great in midweek against PSG. And he's, he is having a fabulous season. But he, he it still just doesn't overly appeal to me, Bernardo Silva. I would rather have Foden. Um, if you look at the statistics, Foden v Bernardo as well. Foden's all over it. Z says, hi, James. Been a while. My bench options this week are Duffy and Livramento. Worth moving one to Mitchell or roll transfer and trans one of them to Alonso next game week. Have Foden, hence the question. Um, I think Duffy might get left out by Brighton, mate. I think it could finally be up and but. I've said it a lot and been wrong a lot, in fairness. So, look, if Duffy is going to play against Leeds, that's reasonable this weekend. I actually, I, I've predicted 2-0 to Brighton in that fixture. So, I wouldn't fear that. I guess it comes down to, do you think Duffy will play or not? If you do... I'd stick. If you don't, I'd move him on. Alistair Copas says, Afternoon, mate. Any of these players were for minus four to be able to bench Antonio? I don't even want to read them out, Alistair. I just want you to play Antonio. Uh, Gallagher, Huang, Jimenez, Jesus. No. Uh, Owen Walsh says, Hi, James. Hope you're keeping well, mate. I'm wildcarding like yourself in game week 16. Man, these people coming out of the woodwork. I thought I was the only one. Um... Which you like for this week? Antonio to Jimenez or Ronaldo to Kane? Good luck this week. Cheers. Ronaldo to Kane. Andrew Grandin says, Hi, James. I know the answer, but need saving for myself. If you know the answer. 
Minus four for Chilwell to Alonso to restore my back four or eat the price drop, play a back three, start Dennis in a fine fixture and get Alonso next game week. You already know the answer, mate. Dennis is fine this week, mate. Alan Hollihan, do you think Conte's comments were genuine frustration or a method to fire up his players? Neither. It's a message to the board. <laughs> it's a message to the board. Just to reaffirm, look, I need money in January. I need money next summer. Um, yeah, I, I think it was fine what Conte said. Yeah, listen, there's, there's people all throughout that football club who need to kick up the arse, and he's the person who's going to do it. Adam said, where do you think Arsenal will finish this season if you have to put money on it? If I had to put money on it, I would say sixth. B. Conway says, bench one of Callum Wilson, Emerson Royal and Lamptey. Uh, Emerson Royal. From that, I think, yeah. Nikki Kassam says, all my mates have uh, been taking the piss because I'm thinking of shipping Antonio for Palace forward. Am I mad? No, Nikki, you're not. Laugh at them on Saturday evening when Benteke scores against Old Club Villa tomorrow. Crollo says, hey, James, would you do Foden and Tierney to Alonso and Jota for a hit? Downgrading Foden enables Alonso have the other three big premium defenders or downgrade Armstrong to 4.4 and bring Alonso in. Well, this is a difficult one because I think Kieran Tierney will come back into the Arsenal team. And therefore, you're looking at great fixture for him, aren't you? But I can certainly see the temptation. If I could say to you now, Tierney won't play, then it's definite. Yeah, take the hit and do it. Uh, if you don't want Tierney longer term and you're prepared to know that that might slap you with a Kieran Tierney return this week, I'm going to say, yeah, crack on. James98 says, is there a case to make that the top three in England is now the top three in Europe? Can only see buying calls and any of them trouble in the Champions League. That's exactly my opinion, James. I've not got anything to add on that. I've said it previously. I think one of those four teams will win the Champions League this year. I'd be very surprised if anyone else did. Jasim Jazz says, who would you downgrade to move Chilwell to Cancelo? Foden to Bernardo or any, or Antonio to cheaper forward and best replacement for those players. Um, Antonio down, and it might not seem right, but Callum Wilson, if if that's enough for you. Really like Callum Wilson for the next three, actually. Josh Rattan says, hi, James. Uh, Ayer took a hit for Jota. Would you take another hit to take Alonso for Chilwell? Thanks. Again, it's very dependent on what's on your bench, Joshua. Pushkar says, advice for owners of Chilwell and Foden. And who hold Antonio and also want to move him on? Uh, Foden would hold. But if he doesn't play this week, he'll probably play on Wednesday. And then I've got a good fixture Wednesday. I've got a good fixture next Saturday. So is he going to play all three anyway? No, probably not. So just look at it that way. Uh, so Foden hold. Chilwell's got to go. Um, although, again, your bench is probably dependent on how quickly that's got to go. Antonio, I, I personally, I'd be moving it on. Uh, John Bailey says Conte out. <laughs> no. No, Antonio Conte is obviously part to blame for last night's shenanigans, but no, we're not there, mate. Andrew Ross says, Hi, mate. Please tell me who to bench, Tony or Antonio. It's definitely not Ivan Tony this week, mate. Not against that Everton team at the moment. There you go. There's your answer. Adash says, Hi, James. Worth wasting a transfer from Sun to Jota. We already have Kane. Spurs don't excite me at the moment. Thanks. You know what I'm going to say, mate. You know what I'm going to say. It's hold Sonny. Hold Sonny for this week. Bin them both. Bin them both come game week 16. James98 say, uh, says, Also, does Man City's result against PSG show that a system will overcome individual talent more times than most? Uh, not that City are lacking much talent, by the way. Yeah, That's what I was going to say, mate. Okay, PSG's front three is stronger than City's front three. But what about the rest of the team? Yeah, not so sure, mate. So, but yeah, P PSG for me, I said this prior to the game, can't see them win the Champions League this year. Too much individuality in them. They're a little bit scattergun. They'll have amazing moments. They're capable of beating anyone. They're also capable of weird things like drawing in Bruges. Leipzig got five there. City got five there. Sadnik says, afternoon, Jimbo, my favourite gentleman. Shake your hand. Two questions. One. What do you make of that Conte press conference? Is he throwing the team under the bus? 
Can Spurs fan never dream of anything good? How we listen, all football fans should be allowed to dream. Otherwise, what's the point, my friend? Um, it wasn't throwing the team under the bus, mate. It was throwing the squad under the bus because the squad is not good enough. There's a there's a lot of players, honestly, like for Oliver Skip, for example. Oliver Skip would have got back in the dressing room and got a pat on the back last night for the effort alone that he showed, particularly in that second half. So, listen, a few of them very much deserve to be called out. For a lot of them, Doherty, Deli Ali, Undombele, Ryan Sessegnon, Davinson Sanchez, Joe Rodon, Brian Hill, Galini in goal. It was, all, it, was, it was an audition for them to stake a claim to get near the first 11, and they all failed. No, I don't blame him. The rotation is necessary over these coming fixtures, and he hasn't learned anything on them players in terms of whether he can trust them or not. Andras Yamas says, how did Davinson Sanchez enjoy the shops in Slovenia? <laughs> yeah, I can't argue that, mate. He got sent for he got sent for at least one hot dog, didn't he? Uh him Mangshu Daz says, Hi James, hope you're well. Thoughts on rumours regarding Liverpool match getting cancelled due to weather? No. Also, Antonio to Wilson or Alan St. Maximin. Next game we will get Alonso with the money. No, listen, it's going to be windy. I don't think we're in a position where we're looking at games getting postponed, mate. Um, the only way that would happen is if it's completely unsafe for Southampton fans to and the, the team. I mean, the team will probably travel up to Liverpool tonight. If it's completely unsafe for Southampton fans to travel to Liverpool, then that's the sort of thing that will put the game into doubt. I'm travelling from south to north tomorrow, right? So if I'm in trouble, then well, there, there'll be no beers in Manchester tomorrow night. The, the game won't be in danger, mate. James Check is not going to be. It's going to be very windy, but it's not. It's not going to be that bad, mate. James Checkley said, "Afternoon, Jack. I, I sound up. Like anyone remember Michael Frost <laughs> when he said in the eighties, do 'Don't worry, trees won't be falling down tonight.' And sure enough, they did. I realised I sounded like him then. James Checkley says, "Afternoon, James. Antonio out for Vardy or Benteke for free or for Kane minus four. Oh, Jamie Vardy for free, mate. Quite straightforward, I think." FPLD, hi James, where do you think the current Barcelona team would finish in the Premier League? Somewhere between 4th and 7th. Um, it would depend on their consistency because that's the big problem for everyone else outside of the top three is consistency. So it would depend on that. They are miles behind the big three. Um, I would argue that all of Arsenal, West Ham and Manchester United are better than them on their day. Um, I couldn't see them finishing below Tottenham at the moment. Uh, so, honestly, 6th, 7th? Philip Sutter says, Hi James, thanks for the great content. Non, not exactly FPL question. Based on Conte, Ranić, and other appointments, how big of a challenge is it for a new manager to really impact the squad? It depends, right? Because for some people, running through brick walls will get more out of them. And actually, I, don't, I think that's probably what will happen with Tottenham over the next week or so, that just sheer increased work rate will actually probably lead to some positive results over the next week or so. It depends, right? Because as well as that, Conte obviously is really methodical in terms of how he wants his teams to play football. And I can see passing patterns that are already happening, particularly via Eric Dyer's distribution defensively. So it depends, right? The the players have got to abs want to absorb what's happening as well. So it depends if they're going into into the squad and what the squad's reaction is. The squad needs to get on board as well. Now there's too many dickheads within that Tottenham squad who need binning and getting out of the football club. So I I don't you know, if it had been Conte or Klopp or anyone who'd come in, we could have got beat last night if you have dumb things like players getting sent off getting a second yellow card for the most blatant yellow card you'll ever see when he was already on one, idiot, and carrying passages of players to give them a chance. Well, he's probably learned his lesson on the, the carrying of the passengers of players. So, yeah, it, it, there's no set this works. I mean, take Solskjaer, right? He's been derided for his tactical stuff. But when he walked in United, he was brilliant for two months. They won nearly every game. So, it depends... Uh, some some clubs just need that instant impact and it will come. Some who they've got ideas and philosophies and will take a little bit longer to get there. In the case of Conte, it's a case that he's, there's too many bad players there. 
too many bad players there. In the case of Ranić, if Ranić can organise Manchester United, they'll do great fairly quickly. Won't take long at all, I don't think. Uh, Sanya says, would you double up on City or Chelsea defence? James and Alonso is exciting, but City have the knack of churning out clean sheets for fun when the fixtures pile up. It's way more fun to have Alonso and Reese James, mate. And that's the answer. Pushkar says, he's going five at the back the move now. Fifth defender versus fourth mid versus third forward. How do you look at this? I look at this that you're going to need a bench over the next month. And therefore, five at the back's not the way to go. The optimal strategy right now is to have Trent Cancelo, James Alonso, in my opinion, and one great cover on the bench, be that uh, Tino Liveramento or whomever, right? That's the optimum way to go. Liveramento, first sub every week. Don't get too overlooked by the fixtures. That's brilliant coverage. That's the ideal solution at the moment. You go to five at the back, depending on how you spend the money, you're either giving yourself a massive benching headache of an attacking player to leave out every week, or you're you're going two four point five millions and a four point five million forward. Now that's that's not what I'd want my bench to look like in December. Rishi says, Hi James, I have one free transfer and Ronaldo. Should I just do Ronaldo to Kane or explosive transfers? Ronaldo and Mbuemo to Mane and Benteco. Or Ronaldo and Duffy to Vardy and Alonso. Well, I wouldn't get rid of Mbuemo this week either. Honestly. So there's your answer. Just buy Harry, mate. Buy Harry, let it, just let it roll out for the next 10 days or so, and then sell him in game week 16. BA says, Hi James, would you bring in Alonso for Tierney or Rafinha for Jota? I presume that's Jota for Rafinha. Already done as Pelaqueta to James, one transfer left. I mean, if it's free, yeah, I'd get Alonso in, mate. Kate Muppet says, Hi James, would you start a Marty or Broha? Many thanks. <laughs> that's a good one. I think Broha will start for Southampton tomorrow. That probably helps you with your answer. Um, Leicester are better without Daniel Amati, in my opinion, irrespective of system. So, Broha, mate. Joshua Nia says, I have... You're going to give me your whole team. Thanks for the question, Joshua, but I'm not going to read out your whole team, mate. Good luck. Uh, Columbus SWFC, Chef Wednesday fan, I take it. Hi, mate. Thoughts on my team, Chef Wednesday as a club. Would you like to see them back in the big time? Cheers. Yes, I've spoken about this a number of times. Regularly get asked, who would you like to see come back in the Premier League? And I say Wednesday. Possibly for a personal selfishness that I haven't been to Hillsborough. Uh, Night in the Forest, another one. But yeah, I'd like... Wednesday was a, a traditional top-half club when I first started going to football. So yeah, I'd, I'd like to see Wednesday come back. I'm not sure it's going to happen anytime soon though, mate. RW Chris 1983. Hi James. Uh, I have 1.5 million in the bank, so I can sell Rafinha to get Jota for this weekend. Would you make the transfer this weekend or later? Cheers for your content. Keep up the good work. Well, I think if you don't sell Rafinha this week, you won't be doing it in the next two game weeks. Then you may look at doing it in game week 16, but Firmino might be back by that point, so then it's possibly off the table. Um, I just think Rafinha's got great fixtures in game week 14 or 15 and that's why I don't want to sell I'll just play him this week Jim says hi James what did you make of Conte's comments yesterday about the state of the Spurs squad I know it isn't looking great but more than good enough to beat Mora of course of course that's where it goes beyond manager it goes beyond manager because he he should be put he could put the academy team out on the, and they should do it now they got themselves in a bad situation where they conceded a goal and then lost a player and then you've got a couple of players in the team who are barely championship quality and it shows and so you can't have that drop off in level when you're a man short because you're just carrying players then um and they recovered a little bit in the second half and and threw themselves at it with 10 men and uh, to be honest, I've seen plenty worse in the past. But of course, there's no excuse for the result. I've said this many times, and I tweeted this yesterday or last night after the game as well. The biggest lie anyone told you over the last few weeks was when Conte got appointed and you kept hearing people say, Tottenham have an incredible squad. It's fucking bullshit. That's the one thing where I will give Nuno some defence, and I'll even give Mourinho some defence. The players in that squad are not good enough. If Tottenham have success this year, it will be because of the manager. Murray Roach says, Hey James, hope you're well. What can you share about the day Klinsman came to Spurs? First time. Wow. I remember the moment like it was yesterday. 
I can't tell you the date, but I can certainly tell you that it was uh, late July in 1994. And back in the day, this is for the older guys. If, you, if you're like under 30, I'd switch off for a minute or two. The only way you got your football news was going to CFAX, page 301 or 302. And you used to get the football headlines up. And I was at home. And I, it must... It, either my dad didn't have a job at the time because uh, he had spells, unfortunately, where he was out of work. Or it was a weekend day. But it was certainly quite early in the day. It was like lunchtime-ish or something. Whacked on the old headlines. And the main headline used to, used to have loads of little headlines. And the main headline was like quite big. Go across the top of the TV. Klinsman signs for Spurs. So even back then, when I was like 10 years old, I was like, hmm, something's not right here. Click the headline, read the report about it, which would now be like a BBC News website article or something. Yep, sure enough. Not even like linked or rumoured or it's done. He signed, confirmed. Klinsman quotes about signing for Tottenham. Ran upstairs. My poor dad was having a shave. And I said, I said to dad, what would you say if I said we bought Jurgen Klinsmann? And he was like, shut up. And I was like, no, no, seriously, come downstairs. That poor bastard cut himself shaving, didn't he? <laughs> I remember that like it was uh, yesterday. And, and then the, the first games afterwards as well, we went to Watford in a friendly. We had like three sides of the ground. We invaded the pitch afterwards. Um, the opening day goal at Hillsborough. Then the bicycle kick like 10 minutes into his home debut against Everton. It was phenomenal. Like that was wow as a kid. Yeah, it was fan it was a fantastic time. Um, and then we started losing quite heavily, quite a lot as, as we do. Andrew Jarvis says, hello, mate. Do I have the right bench order? And Buemo, White, Liveramento. I'm keeping Antonio in the starting level and can't find a way to get White in. I'd be more, more worried about getting Buemo in that team, mate. I'd be very tempted to possibly start on Buemo over Antonio, yeah. I know, I know, I know. I know what everyone's thinking. Hey, James blanking every week. I really fancy them this weekend against Everton. Um, but yes, your order is correct, Andrew. James98, sorry for the FPL question. You don't need to be, mate. It's Friday. Who could you start from Mbwemo or Wilson? Currently leaning towards Mbwemo due to Everton's last few performances and just praying Wilson doesn't get put. Yeah, I, I think that... I think that's more one. I'd probably just edge for Wilson. But it's really close. I would not be comfortable leaving Mbwemo out of the team this week. Um, and I'm looking to get rid of Mbwemo and Tony immediately following this game before they play Tottenham. Yep, this is why I'm not successful at FPL, guys. Ludwig says, is Jota worth getting for a minus eight? No, next question. Chris Allman says, afternoon, James. I currently have Douglas Louise at third sub. With no other issues, would you switch this to either Gilmore or Norman at Norwich or roll the transfer? Have a good weekend. Roll the transfer, mate. Roll the transfer. That's the sort of transfer you want to make when you've got two free transfers and you don't know what to do. So if you're still sitting there with the same predicament on Tuesday morning, Chris, yeah, fine. Make that move then. No problem at all. Douglas Dewey is back in the Villa squad and I think he'll get back in that team as well. It's worth saying. FPL telling Josh says, on wildcard this week, product of early moves last weekend for Trent and still had Chilwell. Do you think the back four is still the way to go with Alonso instead of Chilwell or just go free and push money in attack? No, I'd I'd definitely, if I was on the wild card, I'd go all four. City as well, you got to remember, most people have not got Alonso. So there's your advantage. Go and get it. Dan L says, Hi, James. No question. Just want uh, want to thank you for the message on Twitter. It meant a lot, mate. Bless you, my friend. No problem. Anytime, mate. Uh, Bet 1604. Hi, James. Who is your favourite pundit on TV at the moment? And who can you not stand? Most of them I can't stand. Because they talk nonsense. Um, just don't add anything. To, I I want someone to tell me things. And I think, I oh, didn't know that. Or I didn't notice that. Uh, best in the business for me is Gary Neville. And uh, despite, um, I know people, a lot of people dislike him. I like Jamie Carragher. Pundits I can't stand. Uh, Michael Warren, Steve McManaman. Um, Soonest does nothing for me to be honest he thinks he's still watching the game like it's being played in the 1980s the game's evolved and changed uh, but most of them to be honest I don't bother with a lot of punditry because most of it is so shy uh, Tammy Gord says hello James would you take minus four from Chilwell to Alonso 
again, covered this a number of times, Tam. I think it's very much dependent on your bench, mate. Paul Willis says, Hi, James. You're generous sharing your knowledge and the research you do. How do you keep an edge on the rest of us, or do you keep some sneaky info to yourself? I mean, it's stuff I do for the patrons, which I might say on Patreon that I don't say out loud. But it's to be honest, it's never done intentionally. It's just it might be that that's that's where the comment lands. And then sometimes I think, oh shit, I need to sit that on Patreon. Or sometimes I think, oh shit, I should have saved that for Patreon. So I don't. It's whatever's in there tends to just come out of my mouth. To be very honest, hence the you need the bleep button with me sometimes. In terms of like an edge, I don't have an edge on anybody. So that's why I, I explained this on the stream last week about FPL expert. I hate the term. The majority of you listening are better at FPL than me, right? So I don't like that. Um, I'm always looking for an edge for the content. Honestly, I, I feel like with every passing month, I care less and less about FPL and just care more about making the content, right? So it doesn't become about my team as much. It becomes about everybody else's. I don't lose my mind over this game where only one person out of 8 million is going to win it. It's never going to be me. So... I get more bothered as the Sky listeners will know. I get more bothered about my failures in Sky Fantasy, and that's not going great this year. So, I, I I have no edge. I have no edge. I just immerse myself in it because I want the quality of the content to be good. Um, with that in mind, Colm Bugler says, "Hit that like button. Yeah, smash the like, guys. Be much appreciated. Subscribe button and all that." Uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick summary at the end in terms of what comes up, what's coming up content-wise as well. Atul Balaji says, FPL question, would you start Gallagher or Antonio? Non-FPL question, who is the best centre-back in the league this season? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would start Antonio, personally. Yes, I still would. Um, I, I don't think I've got him on my benching dilemmas, and I'm beginning to think from some of these questions that I probably need to reassess that and put him on it. Um, to say to most people for the deadline stream tomorrow, yeah, start him. Uh, best centre back in the league this season. I, I'm gonna say Rudiger. I think is the right answer. Um, which is interesting. On the talking tactics today, I, I, I highlighted some stuff about him stepping out of position a bit. But he's aggressive and it's in his nature. Uh, I think Rudiger. Personally, I think it would have to be someone probably from Chelsea and. I think he's been the standout. Uh, Mick Summers says, almost time for a pint. Uh, yeah, about 24 hours or so, mate. A bit longer. Uh, FPL family's in. Says, afternoon, James. Great to see you at Spurs last week. Good luck this game week. Yep, yeah, so it was a delight as ever to see Lee and Sam at Spurs last uh, last Sunday before the game. Sam, obviously, there supporting her team. Lee just infiltrating as usual because... Um, I don't know, he doesn't get enough good football watching Liverpool, so he thinks he's come and watch some shit, I suppose. Nasu says, how long do you plan to keep Kane and Sun for? They're going on wildcard in 16. A man can't says, keep up the good content, mate. For a hit, would you do Livramento to Alonso, Armstrong to Benteke, or just play Brandon Williams? I, I, honestly, I think Norwich might win tomorrow. Um, I think it must be said, and I covered this on our Patreon pod this morning, it's born out of a comment I made on Monday's podcast about Wolves that it wouldn't surprise you if they lost at Norwich. It's like a very Wolves thing to do. Um, I'd play Brandon Williams, mate. Fuck it, play him. Shell shock trophy. Start Antonio Rafinha. I'm still going to go with a big man up front, mate. Antonio. James Johnson says, Hey, James, isolating with the big C word. Loving the stream. Thanks for the entertainment as always, mate. James, get well soon, mate. Stay safe, buddy. Danny says, Hi James, would you do Ronaldo to Kane this week for a hit to target Spurs next three games? Do you think Ronaldo won't automatically start now under Ranić given his inability to press? Okay. No. No, no, no. Cristiano Ronaldo will be starting for Man United. Don't doubt that. Ronaldo, I spoke about this earlier in the stream. So Ronaldo can do things like stop pressing lines. If you're expecting Ronaldo to go and like be sprinting and like chasing down fullbacks, well, Harry Kane can't do that anymore. So we can't be expecting Cristiano Ronaldo to do that anymore. So no, it's important that the players around him fit within a system that's going to work for Ronaldo. And they can press and force people to go back towards Ronaldo's area. So the, the crucial thing in a strategy is the 10, if that's how they're going to play. We know Bruno likes to press, so that's not a problem. 
You have to get the wide players to press. And when the wide players press, you need the rest of the team to go and support it. So it means the back four play in a high line. It means fullbacks go and be brave and support the wingers when they go and press. And it, it's a lot about pass, stopping passing lines in between. And for Ronaldo, it's just that. Try and stop passing lines. So if you're playing against a Chelsea, like a Jorginho, his job on Sunday, he can have a defensive role in the team. His job would be try and stop Thiago Silva passing the ball directly to Jorginho. Because at least if it has to go to Rudiger or let's say Christensen plays, if it has to go to them first before going to Jorginho, that takes more time. That's it. So you can have a use in the game by not pressing and just delaying people. There won't be no Cristiano Ronaldo can't play in a pressing team. That's not the case, mate. He will be in that team. Uh, to answer your question, though, yeah, I'd still take a minus four for Harry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would. I would. Sod it. Joe Finney Baddis says, Hi, James. Do you reckon Ranieri uses his high press again this week, or will he be worried about Vardy in behind? Well, he'll know Vardy better than anyone, obviously, won't he, Joe? Uh, I suspect it might come down to personnel, Joe, with obviously Nkunku's unavailable, isn't he? So. I don't know if that means someone like Cathcart's going to play, in which case that in itself probably necessitates a deeper line. Um, but I was impressed and I, I was disappointed in myself. This is, I don't take notes to the pod, right? The thing that annoyed me most after the podcast was that I never shouted out Lauza uh, for his performance against United. Because I watched the game back and he obviously allowed like Sissoko and uh, it was cleverly who played, wasn't it, in front. To, to go and get in people's faces and he gave a, a real kind of deep line protection to that back four um, and if he does that again I think Watford might see an upturn albeit after some of these fixtures um, in some of their defensive returns so it, it might come down to the personnel though Joe I can't see Cathcart playing on the halfway line can you Jake French says who would you bench out of Walker Antonio or, Am or Buemo uh, Fuck, man. <laughs> and Buemo, yes, that's awful. Sam Holden says, Spurs kind of treading water as a club currently with Kane looking for the exit and Sun nearing 30. What do you think the next iteration of this Tottenham team is? Uh, a completely new one, Sam. I was asked last night who I'd keep out the team. I said, no one. And someone said, even Sun. I said, yeah, Sun's 29. If Tottenham get big money offer for him, they should consider taking it and reinvesting that in something younger. Yeah, honestly. Now, Hume Son gets into most teams. You know, even some of those challenging for the league in this country, I think he gets in their team. But yeah, if Tottenham get a monster money offer for Hume Son, they should consider it. He's on long contract. So, you know, you can make the decision now for yourselves. I can't believe Son signed that new contract in the summer, to tell you the truth. So, yeah, something completely new. We're going to go for a little bit of pain. Hopefully, we're going to come out the other end. Conte probably won't be in charge longer than 18 months. Um, and then I hope we have a high pressing coach after maybe touch wood Antonio Conte's put a league cup on the board next February or maybe even uh, yeah I'm just going to say next February this this coming February even or March whenever the final is uh, Luke Hopkins says chill to Alonso James just don't overthink it don't overthink it mate Andy P says no question James just showing respect for you and decision the content you put out thanks for what you do we very much appreciate that. Thank you. Giacomo Zamboni says, Hi, James. Would love to know what moisturiser you use. Skin is absolutely glowing. None, mate. It's just the lighting. Honestly. It's just the light. I've got a really bad light in here. Um, and it tends to make me look like I've got a bit more of a tan than what I do. <laughs> no, I don't use anything on my face, honestly. There's no, look at this double chin. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's no airs. There's no airs or graces to me, mate, honestly. Um, if, if you come for a beer, imagine that you'll see there's no moisturiser. Definitely not, mate. This is ageing away. MG Beckett says, Hi, James, would you do Bruno to Sun for free or Bruno Antonio for Gundogan and Kane for a minus four? Uh, I quite like that. Minus four, actually, mate. Yeah, I think I'd do that. Uh, Columbus SWFC says, is Gundogan worth a, a look or is he just a transfer waiting to happen when KDB is back? Tar. Uh, well, to answer the... Yeah, I actually, I still prefer Gundogan over Bernardo, personally. Um, inevitability is rotations coming for Man City. I still think when it comes to the crunch, if Guardiola was picking his strongest team tomorrow... Gundogan would definitely be in it, and I'm not sure that Bernardo Silva would be, is my opinion. 
Stephen Warren said, listen to the podcast for a couple of years. Thanks for the awesome content. First time seeing you on YouTube, you're the absolute double of the I'm a snake guy and now I can't take you seriously. <laughs> I'm a snake. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Dominikas, uh, Vitkauskas, sorry if I mispronounced that. Hello, James. Would you, one, keep Ronaldo, uh, two, get Kane, uh, but won't be able to afford James Alonso, three, Get Aubameyang, have cash for James Alonso next. I'd get Kane. I think Harry will do very well over the next three games, honestly. Uh, right, let's do two more and then I'm going to wrap this up. Actually, I'll make it three more because I can see Jack Toner's in third, uh, my Burnley correspondent. James Palmer says, wild card in game week 16. Two free transfers. Shifting Shaw for Trent, but need cash. Thinking of Foden to Smith Rowe, but could do Vardy to Jimenez. Thoughts? Uh, wouldn't want to get rid of Vardy, he's already covered, so... Yeah, Foden to Smith Rowe enables it. That's absolutely fine. Ross Watson says, Afternoon, James. Sky question here. Taking Chilwell and Liveramento out, but who would you replace them for? Reese James and Webster or Alonso and Dunk? Reese James and Webster or Alonso and Dunk? Um, I, I just, I'm trying to work out if you could do Reese James and Alonso, and I'm going to say no. Um... I'd be tempted, Ross, to say Alonso and Webster. And then what do you do with the rest of the money? And that might be where the answer lies. Uh, Jack Toner, my Burnley correspondent, who I'll be seeing in Manchester tomorrow night, says, Hi, mate. Do you know of anywhere I can pick up a NS Murrah kit for Saturday's meetup? No. Oddly enough, mate, apparently so I've been told 100 times in the last 24 hours. I've only been in existence for about nine years, so... I ain't got no fans or nothing anyway. So. No, mate. No, I mean, if I'd have gone to Slovenia and travelled all that way for nothing, like I'm probably going to Burnley to travel for nothing this weekend, then, uh, yeah, I could have sorted you out one of them shitty half-and-half half scarves or something, Jack. Do you want me to see in the Tottenham shot if there's any half-and-half half and it's more scarves going? <laughs> Imagine. It won't be. Um, as Jack said, um, and for those who are late to the stream, uh, there is a meet-up in Manchester tomorrow night from about 5.30 onwards. I'm not, in all honesty, planning on staying out much later than 10 o'clock or so. Because I've got to get up early the next day to go to Burnley. But I'll be in the Brotherhood uh, in Manchester. I will reshare on Twitter tonight um, the venue and stuff. Follow me, Planet FPL Pod. If you're not sure, just DM me anyway and I'll send you the details. There's no tickets or anything. It's literally, I'm going to be in a pub. A few of the correspondents are coming. Jack, Sean, our Everton correspondent. Johnny, City correspondent. Gary, our Man United correspondent. Dan, our Liverpool correspondent. Few of the correspondents come in. Uh, Tom Cannell from Who Got the Assist should be popping by as well. A few other people. It's just a meet up in a pub, have a few beers. If you want to pop by, come and say hello. That's Brotherhood. That's in Manchester City Centre tomorrow from 5 30 ish if you want to come and show your face. Um, also, if you missed the announcement from Monday, uh, December is next Wednesday on Patreon next month. All our basic tier patrons will have access to all the intermediate tier podcasts. There'll be over 20 in December. And all our intermediate tier patrons will have uh, access to the advanced tier video content, which includes my Talking Tactics videos. I've done an analysis today on Thomas Tuchel's tactical system for Chelsea and how they play progressively within system. Um, and one or two possible weaknesses in there as well, but they're a very, very good side. Um, and the advanced tier content, uh, patrons will be getting uh, written content every day in December as well. Uh, the podcast, if you want to join Basic TR in December, work out about 13p a podcast or something. Or you could simply join us say, you know what, thanks, love you guys, want to support the content. We do not promise to make anyone a better FPL manager. As for other patrons out there, ours is about the content and if you want to support our show. Uh, next week's content, I can tell you there will be two main Planet FPL Season 5 podcasts on Monday and Friday. Monday reviewing the weekend football, Friday reviewing all the midweek football. Tuesday will be People's Poll Podcast. We haven't discussed what we're doing for that yet. Wednesday, Sky Fantasy Football. Thursday's Clash of Correspondence with Ricky Saunders and Tom Med discussing the game that will happen that evening between Tottenham and Brentford. And we'll also be looking, as it's obviously after deadline, looking forward to Brentford's trip to Leeds in game week 15 and Tottenham's game with Norwich in game week 15. Uh, we'll be having a debate with Ricky in terms of can we take Salah on with a captaincy in game week 15 with Kane or Hyun Ming Sun. 
Uh, and our Patreon content next week will include two Game Week previews. So Game Week 14 previewed on Tuesday, Game Week 15 on Friday. We'll have Quiz Thursday, Tottenham Wednesday. Could be an absolute riot if my team gets beat at Turf Moor on Sunday. And Monday will be the Q&A. It's going to be a very, very busy week next week with full set of midweek fixtures. Um, for those I didn't get to any questions, many apologies. If you want to send me a screenshot of your question, I'll get that answered for you before the end of the day today. Other than that, have a great weekend, everyone. Hope your arrows are green. Deadline stream will be 10 a.m. UK time tomorrow morning. For the benefit of those on the audio, cue music, please, man, child.